Luka Doncic has taken the NBA by storm, posting rookie numbers we haven't seen since the likes of Michael Jordan. And one thing that has already captured the imagination of NBA fans everywhere is his step-back three-pointer. Inspired by James Harden, Luka has made this shot completely his own. And this type of off-the-dribble shot, combined with his height, allows him to take his time with the release and continue to astound defenders with make after make. There's another layer you must add to all these plays that make it even more impressive. His age. At 19 years old, it's unheard of for someone to be so poised and in control. And nowhere does it show more than in the clutch. Amongst non-center starters who have played at least 15 games of clutch minutes, Doncic is sixth in field goal percentage overall. And if you factor in all players, he's fourth in three-point percentage during the most pressure-filled moments of the game. We saw this clutch gene during the Portland game the other night, where he made the most incredible shot of the season, falling out of bounds with hardly any time on the clock, and still nailed this game-tying shot that sent it into overtime. And this isn't the first time he's been the hero like this. When they played the Rockets not long ago, he literally took over the game late and willed them back in the fourth quarter with clutch shot after clutch shot. And now that they let him hit one, he was starting to feel it. On the isolation off the mismatch on Capella, he just steps back from long distance, lets it fly, and drains another one. By the time he was done, he had scored 11 straight points to erase an 8-point deficit and get the Mavericks the win. Against the Pelicans at home, he posted a near triple-double and put on a real show of both passing and shot-making, and then going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Anthony Davis in New Orleans two days later, filling up the box score for a career-high 34 points and almost pulling them across the finish line in a close loss. And last night, against a tough Thunder team, he hit them with 25 points and 7 assists, including a couple of plays against one of the best defenders in the league in Paul George, breaking his ankles and making him look silly. Midway through his rookie season, with so many highlights and clutch plays already under his belt, it's time to ask the question, is Luka Doncic having the best rookie season of all time? Doncic first made headlines in the EuroLeague, it was natural for people on this side of the Atlantic to think he wasn't going to amount to much. Looking at his slow foot speed and shot release, it was assumed that he'd have a hard time translating that to a much quicker and more athletic league. But as he matured and became the go-to guy for a Real Madrid team that was the toast of Europe, it started becoming clear that this was no ordinary kid phenom. He was a dominant player amongst some serious men. At six foot eight, he has the size to play power forward, but the perimeter skills to be a point guard. And they relied on him in the clutch time and time again. And he made the kind of killer shots that most teenagers would be scared to even take. I even did a video on him back in June explaining why he should be chosen first in the draft as a guy with his ball handling, shooting, and vision at his size doesn't come along very often. He dropped the third and then got swapped with Trey Young to get him down to Dallas. And through his first 35 games in the NBA, there has been no question he's living up to everything I said he would. For historical context, if Luka continues his production through the end of the year, He'll join a list of only one other player to average at least 19.5 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists, and an effective field goal percentage above 50%. At first glance of the analytics, it might appear that Doncic doesn't have a positive impact while on the floor. But what started out as an even wider gap a few weeks ago has rapidly closed since he's gotten more and more comfortable on the floor. 
Of course, he's making some typical rookie mistakes with the ball, the kind that can make Carlisle lose his hair. But whoops, well, you know what I mean. But let's start by looking at a key component to his game that makes him so hard to guard, his passing and vision. Carlisle has done a good job to run lineups out there that get Doncic mismatches with his size. And when they run him through the high post, if a cutter gets open, you can be sure Luka will be able to see over his man and hit him with the beauty of the pass for an easy bucket. But he's not limited to standstill passing from the elbow, as he's got a great handle and strength to whip passes across the court for open looks at three-pointers. And they also run a crazy amount of Spain pick and roll with Luca. And in this action, a third screener back screens the ball screener's man. If the defense doesn't switch properly, someone is left open and Luca knows how to find him. Oftentimes, the screens don't even need to be set that well, as Matthews just flares out to the top before setting the back screen and he's wide open. With so much attention on the three men involved in the action, you sometimes can lure a fourth defender to help one pass away off the corner, and this is an even better shot for the Mavs. Luka can also get deep penetration off of this when the back screener's man gets confused and doesn't get on the line of deployment. If they recover well enough, he can kick it back to the corner for another easy three. They'll also run it with J.J. Barea at the point of attack and letting the diminutive point guard make decisions is almost always a good thing for the Mavs. Here, they can't get anything out of the initial Spain attack, so it lets Luca be an attacker out of another pick and roll out top. And just look at his vision as Cleaver cuts to the hoop from the corner. With Luca's experience, he plays the pick and roll like a veteran, able to make the right decision quickly. Most of his screens are set by DeAndre Jordan, and Jordan's man tends to sink way down and rely on the defender out top to get around. If he doesn't, splash. The shots he gets from DJ's screens aren't always the easiest, but he's got a great sense of how to change speeds and use his body to get space and finish in awkward spaces with nice touch. They've used Pistol a bunch, handing off to Luka and then setting the ball screen. Defenses will have to stop going underneath the ball screen soon or else live with Doncic bombing threes on them. Luka and Dennis Smith Jr. are trying to live peacefully together. Here, Luka gives it up to him off the Iverson cut, but when nothing's doing, he gives it right back, and Luka masterfully uses the screen, then rescreen, to get going downhill for a quick hop into a floater. Luka also has good vision off the pick and roll and is a very willing passer when he sucks in the defense. With his size, he can see and then make these types of skips to the corner even if his teammates struggle to hit open shots. Here's another pick and roll at Sword of Spain, and you can see him scanning the landscape, looking and waiting for the best shot. The pass is right on the money with perfect timing, even if Barnes can hit it. Simple reads are also easy for him, but the key is that he can hit the man with accurate passing and timing. And this time, Barnes' lift from the corner rewards him with the assist. And shorter guards always have trouble skipping the ball along the baseline. But watch how he's under control, not threatened by the pressure of the defense, and delivers the ball for the easy catch-and-shoot corner three. One issue I've seen with his shooting off a ball screen is that almost all his misses are when DeAndre Jordan sets him the ball screen. That said, DJ sets a ton of screens for everyone, so he'll be involved in all their pick and rolls, practically. But isolating his misses does seem to indicate a bit of a pattern, as Jordan's man sinks way down because he's not a threat from outside three feet, and Doncic hasn't mastered how to deal with all the extra real estate yet. And if you examine his pick and rolls with other players setting them, it just seems to give him a little more breathing room, either because the ball screener is more of a threat than Jordan, or it's a slip screen that catches the defense out of position due to how fast it is set and then cuts away. There are times when he brings the ball up that force an instant mismatch. So he'll just back his man down with his height advantage and execute a fundamentally sound move to get the ball over his man into the basket from close range. This is something we see Russell Westbrook do a lot, and I love to see Carlisle give him free reign to do this as much as possible. One issue we've seen is when there's a tug of war between Dennis Smith Jr. and Doncic for lead guard duties. 
Earlier this year, there was a problem playing them together. But more recently, in the two games Dennis Smith Jr. has been back from injury, lineups with both of them are doing much better than when Smith Jr. is off and Doncic is on. The biggest number that jumps out at me is the number of touches per game between Doncic and Smith Jr. While it was almost equal for much of the first part of the season, just look at the disparity now, and this will no doubt continue the rest of the season. That said, the starters as is just aren't performing well enough for the Mavs to be a playoff team. In order to find a lineup with three starters that is doing well, you have to replace Wes Matthews and Smith Jr. with J.J. Barea and Dorian Finney-Smith. So, expect to see more of this lineup going forward. That said, if Smith Jr. can accept his new role with the ball in his hands a lot less, it will perhaps tamp down rumors that the Mavericks were looking to trade him. It's clear Luka needs to be the man and the main ball handler. And if Smith Jr. can continue to improve his three-point shot and off-ball ability, then the Mavericks will be happy. There's no question his feet are on the slow side, but his IQ more than makes up for it defensively, where he understands positioning and just has a knack for making plays on that end. He's been able to keep guys in front of him by giving them an extra couple of feet and then use his height to contest. This is invaluable when he has to guard quicker guards, and I'm sure the Mavs will be happy with these contested shots, regardless of the outcome. Teams will keep going at him, I'm sure, by forcing a switch on pick and roll, but there is ample evidence he can hold his own and avoid the typical rookie fouls. The more comfortable he gets with opposing players, the more clever I'm sure he'll get with his hands and anticipation. Guys with high IQs seem to know how to make plays on the defensive end. And Luka is already showing upper-level reading of plays, whether it's breaking up a fast-break pass or waiting for the perfect moment to freelance and double-team the ball. It's reasonable to assume that he'll continue to improve. So, if this is his baseline for three-point shooting, then he should become a lethal bomber from back there soon enough. He's got tremendous ability to create separation off the bounce and the height to get his shot off over the defender. And he's certainly not shy about taking them. After the gauntlet of pressure he went through in EuroLeague, it's clear he doesn't shy away from big moments and has been prepared to perform in those situations for years. He's the guy they can turn to more and more when they absolutely need a bucket out top in isolation. And it's just a question of if and when he'll begin to assert himself even more on offense. But if you give a coach like Rick Carlisle a little more time to figure out lineups, and maybe they make an opportune trade to improve their roster, this team can certainly stay right where they are in the middle of the playoff pack. And if that's the case, we'll all win, since we'd get treated to Luka Doncic on a national stage under the bright lights of postseason basketball in the West. And you just know he'll do something special.